1. Make-Believe Mothers When I used to read fairy tales, I fancied that kind of thing never happened, and now here I am in the middle of one. Lewis Carroll, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland It's like drowning. There's a darkness within her that can suck you in and swallow you whole, yet it's unfathomable because she's your mother. Laura's voice sounded flat and far away. She spoke in a child's voice, as if trapped at the bottom of a well. There's no way out, she drew into herself and left me with her fear. I wasn't sure if I could reach her in time. Laura's mother was no ordinary mother. Submerged in the cold darkness of despair, mothers with borderline personality disorder, BPD, struggle to keep their heads above water. They cling desperately to whoever is near and can pull their own children into the blackness. Borderline mothers are intense, unpredictable, and sometimes volatile. One day they may see their children as angelic. Other days their rage or sarcasm can shatter their children's souls. Mothers with several children may perceive one child as all good and another as no good, splitting and projecting contradictory feelings about themselves onto different children. Borderline mothers go off, over the emotional edge, falling into despair or exploding into tirades. Yet at other times, they may be loving, supportive, and nurturing mothers. If researchers are correct in their estimate that approximately 6 million people in the United States suffer from BPD, the number of children living with borderline parents could be staggering. Children who grow up with borderline mothers live in a make-believe world that is neither fiction nor fantasy. Borderland is an emotional world where loving mothers resemble storybook characters, helpless waifs, frightened hermits, bossy queens, or vindictive witches. This whimsically dangerous world is filled with contradiction and fraught with emotional storms that defy prediction. A seven-year-old patient drew a picture of her borderline mother as a wicked witch, threatening to turn her into a frog with the wave of a magic wand. Trapped in a world that others cannot see, feel, or understand, the borderline's child feels hopelessly lost. Laura saw her mother as a self-centered queen who periodically transformed into a witch. Christina Crawford, the adopted daughter of actress Joan Crawford, grew up with a mother like Laura's and described her experience in her famous autobiography, Each Time I Ran Headlong Into an Abyss, that black hole where nothing followed logically where fabrication and anger and turmoil ruled supreme, that place where there was no help and no peace, no escape from the juggernaut of chaos. From her throne in the eye of the hurricane, brandishing her magic wand of obsession, ruled the queen of chaos herself, Mommy Dearest. Because BPD was previously misdiagnosed as schizophrenia, no reliable way exists to estimate the number of adult children with BPD mothers. BPD was first identified as a formal diagnosis in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders in 1980, three years after Joan Crawford's death. Confusion, controversy, and misdiagnosis are not surprising, considering the growing number of individuals who suffer from borderline personality disorder. BPD has been ascribed to personalities as diverse as Susan Smith, a vilified mother who drowned her two young sons in 1994, and the late Diana, Princess of Wales, the caring princess. Charlotte Dupont, the Civil War heiress to the Dupont powder mill fortune, and Sylvia Plath, the award-winning author who committed suicide in 1963, may also have suffered from BPD. The tragedy that marked the lives of these uncommon women could well be attributed to an increasingly common disorder that is transmitted from mother to child. Emotional intensity, impulsivity, unpredictability, and fear of abandonment are symptoms observable primarily by those who have an intimate relationship with the borderline. Casual acquaintances, co-workers, or neighbors are less likely to witness the borderline's sudden shifts in mood, self-destructive behavior, paranoid distortions, and obsessive ruminations. Like Alice in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, children in Borderland are puzzled by the contradictions of their world and live on the fine line between sanity and insanity. 
Although she can function extraordinarily well in other roles, mothering is the single most daunting task for the borderline female. Her fear of abandonment and her tendency to experience separation as rejection or betrayal lock the borderline mother and her children in a struggle for survival. The child is emotionally imprisoned. Children must separate to survive, but separation threatens their mother's survival. The following thoughts are common among children with borderline mothers. 1. I never know what to expect. 2. I don't trust her. 3. She says it didn't happen. 4. She makes me feel terrible. 5. Everyone else thinks she's great. 6. It's all or nothing. 7. She's so negative. 8. She flips out. 9. Sometimes I can't stand her. 10. She drives me crazy. I never know what to expect. They don't seem to have any rules in particular. At least, if there are, nobody attends to them, and you've no idea how confusing it is. Eric Erickson explained that the first stage of psychological development in children is trust versus basic mistrust. Erickson claimed that the infant's first developmental achievement is the ability to tolerate the mother's absence without undue anxiety, because she has become an inner certainty. Consistency, continuity, and sameness of experience are essential to the development of trust and security for children. Unfortunately, the hallmarks of borderline behavior are inconsistency, unpredictability, and inappropriate intensity. Because borderlines were abused, neglected, or suffered a traumatic loss as children, they are desperately afraid of abandonment. They seek emotional control over others, even threatening abandonment in order not to be abandoned themselves. Their rules and expectations are vague, non-existent, unreasonable, rigid, or unpredictably enforced. Children with borderline mothers experience chronic anxiety because they are uncertain of their mother's behavior. Laura's mother was inconsistent and had difficulty maintaining structure. When Laura was a child, she was forbidden from playing with some of her friends, except when her mother felt ill. When her mother was tired or sick, the only rule was, don't bother me. By the time she was an adolescent, her mother gave up enforcing rules. Laura enjoyed the lack of structure when she was a teenager, but as a child, she was frustrated and confused. When Laura visited her mother as an adult, her mother admonished her, asking, why don't you ever call me? But when Laura telephoned, her mother sounded annoyed, answering the phone impatiently and asking, what? What do you want? Interactions with borderline mothers often leave the child feeling guilty and confused. Joan Crawford, on the other hand, rigidly enforced unreasonable rules that suited her needs rather than her children's needs. Christina explained that her mother programmed every minute of the day, allowing exactly half an hour for eating each meal and for washing the dishes. Christina lamented that her mother's moods fluctuated so dramatically, despite rigid rules, that she was never certain of how she might be treated. I never knew whether it would be a big hug of loving affection or a verbal slap in the face. Children of borderlines never know, from one minute to the next, how their mother feels about them. Like the game, She Loves Me, She Loves Me Not, the mother's moods can suddenly change from affection to rage, creating an uncertain and insecure emotional environment. Winnicott emphasized the importance of the child's need for the good enough mother who provides enough consistency and calmness so that the child is not overwhelmed with anxiety. Without structure and predictability in their emotional world, children have no reality based upon which to build self-esteem and security. I don't trust her. There's no use trying, she said. One can't believe impossible things. Trust is a major issue between borderlines and their children. Children cannot trust the borderline mother for many reasons. One, she is manipulative. Two, she distorts the truth and may even blatantly lie. Three, she may physically harm them. Four, she is unpredictable. Five, she overreacts. Six, 
She is impulsive. 7. She has poor judgment. 8. She has an unreliable memory. 9. She is inconsistent. 10. She is intrusive. Like Alice who confided in the Cheshire Cat, children of borderlines may learn to trust a pet more than their own mother. Jerome Kroll, a psychiatrist specializing in the treatment of borderlines, explains that the cognitive style seen in borderlines consists of a lack of focus or attention to the matter at hand. A balanced understanding of an event is impossible to achieve. Borderline mothers create their own reality, one that is rarely confirmed by their children or others. Regardless of how outrageous the mother's perspective may be, borderline mothers may punish their children for expressing their own views, beliefs, and feelings. Laura questioned her mother's assertion that she was close to bankruptcy. Because Laura knew that her mother earned a substantial income, she suggested consulting a financial planner. When her mother snarled back, You have no idea how this world works! Laura was caught off guard and felt belittled by her mother's response. Like Alice in Through the Looking Glass, Laura questioned her own view of reality. Try again, the White Queen demanded of Alice. Why, sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Borderline mothers negate the child's perspective by implying that the child's perspective is wrong. Laura was rebuked for not sharing her mother's belief that they were desperately poor, yet her mother's perceptions fluctuated with her mood. She felt demeaned by Laura's recommendation to consult a financial planner. Subsequently, her mother responded by demeaning Laura. Borderline mothers feel betrayed and attacked when others do not validate their feelings and perceptions. Unfortunately, they reject, abandon, punish, or vilify those whom they perceive as disloyal, creating a terrifying dilemma for their children. During her adolescence, the lack of trust between Laura and her mother was evident in her mother's tendency to hug and sniff her at the same time. Her mother used such covert methods in order to determine whether or not Laura might be drinking alcohol or smoking marijuana. Naturally, her mother's hugs felt insincere, and Laura resented the use of affection to mask suspicion. Children of borderlines feel helpless when their mothers invade their privacy, manipulate them, invalidate their feelings, and distort the truth. Borderlines distort the truth because their perceptions are distorted. In one instance, a borderline mother claimed that her daughter had been sexually abused by her ex-husband. The daughter was appalled that her mother would make such a claim. The mother, however, had been sexually abused by her own father and interpreted a goodbye kiss between her daughter and ex-husband as evidence of sexual abuse. Distortion is an unconscious way of processing information that reflects the individual's reality. Distortion misleads and aggravates family members, who may take a borderline statement at face value before discovering the facts. Laura grew weary of her mother's overreactions and learned to disregard her mother's statements such as, Something terrible just happened! Borderlines tend to catastrophize and panic easily. Stop everything and help me now! may mean they lost their car keys. I have a terrible headache, may mean leave me alone. I had a car accident, may mean a grocery cart scratched the car. Some borderlines consciously distort the truth in order to prevent abandonment, maintain self-esteem, or avoid conflict. Others may lie to evoke sympathy, attention, and concern. From the borderline's perspective, however, lying feels essential to survival. Although not all borderlines consciously lie, all borderlines experience perceptional distortions. When desperation drives behavior such as lying or stealing, they feel innocent of wrongdoing and do not feel guilt or remorse. Apologies are rare, therefore, and borderlines may be confused about why others expect them to feel remorse. They believe the others would do what they did in order to survive. Their explanation is succinct. But I had to! Thus, the borderline is unconcerned with the consequences of lying because she feels she had no other option. Borderline mothers who habitually lie are especially destructive because they destroy their children's trust. Because they rarely apologize for their behavior, they lead their children to believe that the child is wrong rather than the mother. 
Their survival instinct can lead to many behaviors that others consider abhorrent. When the borderline is hurt or frightened, she feels that her survival is at stake. Thus, morality is temporarily suspended. Christina Crawford describes the child's predicament. I guess it was impossible for an adult who had not been present to believe that she was the one who was lying and I was telling the truth. She was always so convincing. Conflicts and disagreements may escalate into violence because borderline mothers have difficulty managing the intensity of their own emotions. Consequently, physical fights are common between some borderline mothers and their children. In such circumstances, children have had to call the police, escape their homes through windows, flee to neighbors' homes, rescue siblings, and intervene in physical fights between their parents. Some borderline mothers may physically or verbally attack their children in the middle of the night when the children, unfortunately, are most vulnerable. In one case, a patient felt so unsafe that she slept with a steak knife under her pillow until she was 18 when she moved away from home. She says it didn't happen. Alice said nothing. She had never been so much contradicted in all her life before, and she felt that she was losing her temper. Borderlines often forget painful experiences that their children remember vividly. Studies show that chronically intense emotions damage the part of the brain that is responsible for memory. Chronic emotional stress exposes the brain to an excess of glucocorticoids, a hormone that normally helps the brain cope with stress. The hippocampus, which controls memory functioning, contains a high number of glucocorticoid receptors and is therefore susceptible to damage. Because borderline mothers experienced overwhelming emotional distress as children, areas in their brain responsible for memory and emotional regulation may be damaged. Studies using magnetic resonance imaging to examine the brains of females who were abused as children found that the left hippocampus was actually smaller than those in subjects from a control group. Consequently, borderline mothers may not remember experiences recalled by their children. A vicious cycle results as children with borderline mothers are immersed in an emotionally intense environment that, if unmitigated, may also damage their cognitive functioning. Because the borderline mother is unable to remember intensely emotional events, she is unable to learn from experience. She may repeat destructive behaviors without recalling previous consequences. Laura and her sister remembered many episodes when their mother was set off by some trivial incident such as a misplaced item of clothing. When confronted years later with her behavior, their mother denied ever having lost control and stated, How dare you say I did such things after all I've done for you? Therapists report that borderline mothers are often unable to confirm their children's traumatic memories. It is impossible to learn from experience if the experience is not remembered. Thus, borderlines become trapped in repetitive, self-destructive behaviors. They may spend more money than they have, have sex without protecting themselves, drink too much, smoke too much, or eat too much. Although they feel terrible later, they may repeat the behavior because they do not remember the consequences. Their behavior alarms family members and can endanger their children. Some adult children recall riding in cars when their mother was driving drunk or having utilities disconnected as the result of the borderline's impulse spending. Some recall literally saving their mother's life. One night, Laura noticed the smell of burning carpet and extinguished a cigarette her mother had dropped while smoking in bed. Unfortunately, her mother continued to smoke in bed after the near tragedy. When borderlines abuse drugs or alcohol, they can become psychotic. Christina Crawford described many episodes of her mother's horrific night raids. Psychotic behavior, however, is not limited to rage. Equally terrifying is the borderline mother who dissociates, withdraws into despair, self-mutilates, or attempts suicide. Fear and despair can also trigger what are called psychotic breaks. One patient recalled disturbing memories of his mother locking herself in the bathroom and threatening to kill herself as the patient, at age seven, tried to calm her down. Other patients report mothers who threatened to run away and mothers who actually left home. Psychosis can occur when any emotion becomes unmanageable.
Studies indicate that people who were exposed to chronic stress in childhood have higher levels of somatostatin, a stress-related hormone and neurotransmitter in their spinal fluid. Severe stress in childhood appears to have long-term effects on the brain and immune system. Children of borderlines are at risk, therefore, for a variety of physical and emotional disorders as adults. They may also be prone to stress-related physical symptoms, such as colitis or migraine headaches. Christina Crawford once visited a psychiatrist who asked her if she knew what might be causing her headaches. Christina stated simply, Yes, I hate my mother. Adrenaline causes the blood vessels in the brain to constrict and forces blood to the muscles as a necessary preparation for the fight-or-flight response. Following the stressful interaction, the blood vessels dilate, causing the pain of a migraine headache. Candle and Sutterth explain that some researchers believe that a migraine is actually a dysfunction of the nervous system and an unstable threshold in the brain. When internal or external stressors increase, this threshold is exceeded and a migraine headache is produced. It's sort of like one part of your body says, don't step over this line, but you do anyway. For children with borderline mothers, migraines prevent the child from acting on unbearable feelings of rage. The child is paralyzed with pain. The unpredictable behavior of the borderline mother can trigger adrenaline surges, yet children cannot respond with a fight-or-flight response without suffering negative repercussions. Consequently, many adult children of borderlines develop headaches after visiting with their mothers or talking to them on the telephone. Candle and Sutterth explain that researchers have found that the speed of blood flow in the middle cerebral artery decreases during a migraine attack. Somehow, your brain turns on the yellow light and the blood flow slows down. Many children with borderline mothers function with a brain continually flashing caution. She makes me feel terrible. It might end, you know, said Alice to herself, in my going out altogether like a candle. Fear of abandonment is the most common symptom of BPD and is shared by all borderlines. Many researchers and clinicians observe that borderlines fear falling into the abyss when faced with rejection or abandonment. The feeling is sometimes described as survival anxiety. The borderline feels numb, disconnected, and unreal. Thus, borderlines invest enormous effort in preventing abandonment, and family members may feel suffocated, intimidated, and controlled. Borderlines may display dramatic or hysterical behavior such as gasping and crying, sending surges of adrenaline through family members and triggering the startle response. Overreactions to illness and accidents and dramatic displays of rage or withdrawal leave family members feeling sucked in and emotionally depleted. The borderline's children can feel trapped and suffocated, as if their own lives might be extinguished by their mother's neediness. Just as a two-year-old clings to the parent when faced with separation, borderlines have difficulty letting go, saying goodbye, hanging up the phone, ending conversations, and may become suicidal when relationships end. The other person feels held back, dragged down, or pulled under in response to the borderline's message. Don't leave me! Borderlines can self-destruct as a result of their fear of abandonment and often use emotional blackmail to control others. Understandably, children of borderline struggle to manage feelings of shame, guilt, anxiety, and rage. Shame. When a child disagrees with the borderline mother or does not satisfy her needs or wishes, the borderline will attempt to shame, punish, degrade, or vilify the child. In a starkly candid interview, Joan Crawford revealed her draconian philosophy of disciplining eight-year-old Christina. It is not easy to discipline her, but I am forced to when she insists on doing things her own way. I find punishing her by hurting her dignity is very effective. Borderline mothers may use denigration as a method of discipline without being aware of its destructiveness. Those who use it intentionally are severely disturbed, but are not likely to seek treatment because they believe in their sovereign right to discipline their children as they see fit. In their view, they're doing their job as a parent. They believe that a child must be hurt in order to learn appropriate behavior because that is what they were taught as children. Only mothers who are unable to remember the pain of their own denigration 
are likely to denigrate their children. Shame extinguishes the sense of entitlement to one's existence and can trigger self-destructive fantasies in children. Mary Todd Lincoln's stepmother referred to her as a limb of Satan. One of Mrs. Lincoln's biographers explained, to be shamed and humiliated is to feel a disgrace to the whole self. Unfortunately, borderline mothers project their own shame onto others. Anxiety. Children of borderlines grow up in fear, the fear that mother will hurt herself or them. Either way, their survival could be at stake. My patient Laura was unable to leave home without experiencing separation anxiety, the fear that something terrible might happen to her mother or herself. Some days she left the house screaming, I hope you die! But by the time she got to school, she felt sick to her stomach. Children of borderlines become preoccupied with reading their mother's mood in order to ward off a possible crisis or to prevent being attacked. Their emotional energy is invested in contradictory positions, fighting with their mother as well as protecting her. They may have difficulty concentrating on anything else. Borderlines experience separation anxiety in part because disturbing memories of previously abusive and denigrating experiences are most likely to surface when the borderline is alone. Laura's mother told her that memories of being molested by her own father flashed through her mind at night. Sometimes she thought she heard his footsteps outside her bedroom door. The sounds and images made her feel crazy. Laura's mother begged her not to go out and sometimes feigned illness to keep her from leaving. Laura hated to leave her mother alone, yet was desperate to get away from her. Although children of borderlines grow up afraid, they learn not to show their fear and seem oblivious to painful or dangerous situations. They may refuse to cry and learn to shut down when hurt or upset. An adolescent patient explained, after a while you become immune. You don't feel anything anymore. The ability to conceal their feelings is adaptive for children in borderland because some borderline mothers use fear to control their children. Christina Crawford recalled the horror of being locked in a linen closet with the lights off because her mother knew that Christina was afraid of the dark. Borderline mothers may threaten to call the police, cut off financial support, threaten physical harm, or take away loved objects. Both Laura and Christina had loved objects destroyed as punishment. Christina was forced to give away her own Christmas presents. Laura's mother smashed and broke her favorite record albums. Such children learn to hide what they love. When parents use fear to control their children, they shatter the sacred bond of trust. Guilt. When Laura was three years old, her mother told her that God punishes bad little girls. Being good meant not disagreeing with her mother. As an adult, her mother punished her by refusing to return phone calls, answer letters, or respond to email. She would cut her off until Laura's guilt and anxiety built to an intolerable level. Only then would her mother respond. Laura felt completely emotionally invaded as if her mother could read her mind. From the time she was a young child, her mother used fear and guilt to control her. Her mother was unable to respect Laura's need for privacy and lacked appropriate boundaries. She listened in on phone conversations and later used the information to humiliate Laura. Children of borderlines may suffer from separation guilt. Christina Crawford felt that her mother expected not only complete devotion, but wanted to become her. Although Christina felt compassion for her mother, she was torn with guilt for wanting a life of her own. Borderlines view separateness as betrayal, and test loyalty with comments such as, if you love me, you will do this, or you would never do this if you really loved me. Children must constantly prove their love by providing total devotion at the expense of their own needs. Young children naturally fear the withdrawal of their mother's love. When borderlines feel betrayed, they may cut off communication, support, and resources. Adult children may be cut out of their mother's will. Photographs may be removed or destroyed, and family members may be forbidden to mention the name of the offending individual. When enraged, the borderline mother may declare, I have no children, indicating her desire to wipe them out of her mind, a terrifying emotional experience for a child. Borderlines are extraordinarily sensitive to criticism and expect allegiance from their children. 
Because the borderline often turns to her children as allies, her children have no choice but to side with her, even if they must turn against their own father. They know the price they will pay if they do not support her, and they fear her annihilating rage. Rage Sometimes I feel like killing her are words that reflect the rage within some children of borderlines. When a psychiatrist asked serial killer Edmund Kemper why he murdered his mother, Kemper stated, I couldn't handle the hate. Female children are less likely to attack their mother physically, although their anger is no less intense. Christina Crawford expressed the child's murderous rage. In that moment, I hated her so much I wanted to kill her. It didn't even matter to me that I'd have to spend the rest of my life in jail. The borderline's children can become extraordinarily frustrated because no one understands that they are drowning emotionally. No one sees beneath the surface of their mother's facade that she is pulling her own children into her darkness. Some children fear that in order to live, their mother must die. Everyone else thinks she's great. I know they're talking nonsense, Alice thought to herself, and it's foolish to cry about it. So she brushed away her tears and went on as cheerfully as she could. In her book, Cognitive Behavioral Treatment of the Borderline Patient, Marsha Linehan describes the facade of normalcy that borderlines present to others, particularly in work settings where they feel confident and in control. Linehan explains that the borderline's apparent competency leads others to assume that she is equally capable of coping in other roles. When co-workers hear the borderline mother complain about her children, they assume that the children are troubled rather than the mother. Unfortunately, for their children, this means that their private experience is unlikely to be validated by others. Laura's friends could not understand why her mother drove her crazy. They never witnessed her mother's attacks because Laura avoided having her friends stay for an extended period of time. When Laura told them about her mother's dark side, they said, but your mother seems so nice. Laura's sister was the only person who validated her experience. One time when Laura's boyfriend was at her house, her mother flipped out just because she thought my skirt was too short. Laura was embarrassed but also relieved that someone other than her sister had witnessed the attack. In social situations, the borderline mother can be engaging, gracious, and endearing. Christina Crawford was particularly annoyed with the facade her mother presented when entertaining. Christina summarized the child's feelings regarding the dichotomy of the private versus public persona of the borderline mother. I just wanted to scream that it was all a fake. Remarkably, Christina's account of her experience continues to be challenged. In his biography entitled Joan Crawford, The Last Word, Fred Lawrence Giles contends that one of the chief flaws in Christina's memoir is a distortion of known facts in Joan's life, or sometimes a questionable interpretation of those facts. Giles fails to consider the possibility that the distortion of facts might have originated with Joan Crawford. Emotional manipulation and the tendency to distort facts epitomize borderline behavior. Widespread ignorance regarding BPD perpetuates the hopelessness that children with borderline parents experience. They feel abandoned by society at large whenever their reality is discounted. Carl Jung once said, We need more understanding of human nature, because the only real danger that exists is man himself. His psyche should be studied, because we are the origin of all coming evil. The borderline's children are haunted by a darkness within their mothers that others may fail to recognize until it is too late. It's all or nothing. Once she remembered trying to box her own ears for having cheated herself in a game of croquet, she was playing against herself, for this curious child was very fond of pretending to be two people. The borderline's emotional thermostat consists of two settings, on and off. There is no middle ground. Melissa Thornton, a borderline who wrote about her own experience, explains that borderlines split things into simple, polemic pairs of good or bad sadness or joy, black or white. Unable to grasp that something might be both good and bad, a person with BPD can only see the ends of the spectrum. 
Thus, the borderline's inability to experience more than one perspective at a time conveys only one side of the story and one part of the picture. Children see themselves as reflected in the mirror of their parents' eyes. Therefore, children of borderlines may develop two contrasting perceptions of themselves. The resulting confusion, guilt, and shame may be manifested in self-destructive tendencies, such as banging their heads against walls, hitting, or cutting themselves. Believing in her child's basic goodness is only possible if the mother believes in her own goodness. Unfortunately, some borderlines have an inner conviction of being evil. Like most children of borderlines, Christina Crawford and Laura were confused about their identity. Hopelessness and despair can consume the borderlines' child. Laura was not yet in high school when she wrote in her journal, I'm losing my mind. Oh, God, I know how it feels to be buried alive. She's so negative. You don't know much, said the Duchess, and that's a fact. Alice did not at all like the tone of this remark and thought it would be as well to introduce some other subject of conversation. Borderlines have negative thoughts because they have negative feelings about themselves and others. Memory difficulties, difficulty focusing attention, confused and disorganized thinking, the inability to reason logically, morbid introspection, and intrusively negative thoughts are common. Children are subjected to deflating comments that increase despair or destroy their enthusiasm as some borderline mothers assume that the worst possible thing will happen in any given situation. Laura avoided talking to her mother about her problems or worries. She knew that her mother would tell her either that she was too sensitive and worried too much or say something that made her feel worse. When children bring concerns to the attention of the borderline parent, they receive a response that either increases their distress or entirely dismisses their concern. A child who is worried about not passing to the next grade might be told, and then you won't be with your friends your age. You'll be behind forever. Why didn't you study harder this year? The borderline absorbs and intensifies the child's fear. And then this and this could happen and is unable to reassure and comfort the child. Glickalf Hughes and Melman report that daughters of borderline mothers all reported painful memories of turning to their mother for comfort and feeling worse afterwards. When Laura was 12, she proudly announced that she was invited to accompany a friend on vacation. Her mother responded desperately, Oh no! Now we've got to get you some new clothes and I don't have any money! Laura's excitement was replaced by anxiety. Borderlines can deflate the child's enthusiasm by emphasizing negative outcomes. A patient recalled dismay at her mother's reaction to the announcement of her longed-for pregnancy. Her mother's response was, Oh, no, not now, and insinuated that some horrible mistake had been made. When Christina Crawford won a part as a guest star on a television program, she telephoned her mother to share the exciting news. Her mother, however, hung up on her in the middle of their conversation. Bewildered, Christina broke into tears, wondering what had gone wrong. Later, she learned that her mother was intensely jealous of her career. Shortly thereafter, Christina became convinced that her mother could never allow her to enjoy her own success. Emotionally stable parents share their children's joy and quiet their fear. But caretaking roles are reversed for children of borderlines whose mothers are chronically upset. Children repress their fear in order to calm their mother. Situations that should frighten children may not because they have learned not to feel. A dramatic and hopefully rare example occurs when children rescue the borderline mother from suicide attempts. Borderlines are ambivalent about their existence, but do not necessarily want to kill themselves. Their fear of living, however, may be stronger than their fear of death, placing them at risk for harming themselves. Acts of self-mutilation, such as cutting, burning, or hitting oneself, do not represent a death wish and should not be confused with suicidal behavior. Self-mutilation is disturbing to family members who may feel manipulated by such behavior. The borderline, however, may be expressing self-hatred, not necessarily searching for sympathy or attention. Occasionally, some borderlines may inadvertently succeed in committing suicide. Suicidal behavior is a conscious and immediate attempt to end one's life. 
Threats of suicide and suicidal gestures are so commonly associated with BPD that in their absence, the diagnosis may be overlooked. Professionals and family members often fail to identify BPD when suicidality, self-destructive behavior, or depression are not present. Many borderlines do not engage in self-mutilation or suicidal behavior. Joan Crawford apparently never attempted suicide, although her self-destruction was insidious, both through her alcoholism and her refusal to seek psychiatric treatment. Laura's mother, however, overdosed twice, exacerbating Laura's separation anxiety and guilt. She was eight years old the first time she saved her mother's life. Borderline mothers who threaten or attempt suicide keep their children emotionally trapped, and their children may suffer from extreme anxiety, even as adults. She flips out. We're all mad here. I'm mad. You're mad. How do you know I'm mad? said Alice. You must be, said the cat, or you wouldn't have come here. When borderlines are faced with stressful situations, such as the end of a relationship, the death of a loved one, the loss of a job, rejection, or abandonment, they may become paranoid and lose touch with reality. If they abuse alcohol or drugs, their behavior can be life-threatening to themselves or others. They may feel disconnected from their body, and their memory may be impaired. They may lose track of time, lose awareness of their surroundings, and become disoriented. Some borderlines talk out loud when alone or mutter to themselves in the presence of others. They may stare blankly, carrying on a conversation while preoccupied with the chaos of their internal state. Anyone who witnesses a psychotic episode will remember it, unless that person is a child who has witnessed it too many times. Children may repress their feelings and memories of such experiences. The mother's appearance reveals the change in her mental state, the pupils of the eyes enlarge, giving the individual a shark-like look and indicating the potential for attack or detachment from reality. If the underlying feeling is rage, the child may feel threatened. If the underlying feeling is fear, the child may panic. Psychotic episodes are traumatic because the emotions that are evoked are overwhelming. If they are frequent, the child may numb out, dissociate, and seem oblivious to their occurrence. Depending on their frequency, the child may believe such experiences are normal. There were times when Laura felt herself disappearing down a black hole, sinking into her mother. She dreaded the evenings when her mother drank too much and flipped out. Psychotic episodes are intensely disturbing, and Laura didn't like to talk about them. An alien seemed to emerge from her mother, muttering senselessly, tearfully, unable to recognize her own child. Laura tried to stay calm by thinking about something normal, like school or her favorite television program. But memories of the alien would haunt her for the rest of her life. Being alone with a psychotic parent is terrifying for children of any age. The night before Laura left to spend the summer with her father, her mother crawled into her bed crying. She had read a letter from Laura's father in which he told Laura how much he missed her. Laura's mother accused them of plotting against her and was certain that Laura planned to move in with him. Laura was appalled that her mother was threatened by the innocuous letter. When Laura mentioned the incident several years later, her mother had no memory of it. Ordinary mothers sleep at night. Borderline mothers do not. Borderlines dread being alone with their own thoughts. Thus, intrusive, obsessive thoughts may keep them awake at night. Noise from the radio, television, or late-night telephone calls may distract them from their anxiety and provide a sense of security. Alcohol or drug abuse increases their agitation and worsens anxiety. Although not all borderline mothers awaken their children in the middle of the night, Christina Crawford's description of her mother's night raids were among the most remembered excerpts from her famous book. Her description of a psychotic episode captures the child's terror. As the moon lit up part of her face, I could see that look in her eyes again. It was a haunted, excited look. The still of the night is broken by the stirrings of the borderline's ruminations. One patient recalled her mother entering her bedroom and rummaging through her belongings, looking for evidence of drugs. Another patient's mother awakened her father on a regular basis, rebuking him for being able to sleep when she was so upset.
Sometimes I can't stand her. The queen turned crimson with fury, and after glaring at her for a moment like a wild beast, began screaming, Off with her head! Off with! Some children of borderline secretly wish that their mother would die, not because they hate her, but because living with her seems impossible. As an adult, Laura was still drawn into the turmoil of her mother's life. Her mother was the only person on the face of the earth who could stir up her murderous rage. Yet she was terrified that her mother would someday kill herself. Linehan states, The desire to be dead among borderline individuals is often reasonable in that it is based on lives that are currently unbearable. Laura grew weary of her mother's rampages, mood swings, depressive episodes, and her own conflicting feelings. Laura explained that her mother went on tirades. Something could set her off and she would whirl around the house like a cyclone. The warning signal was the look. The look was a piercing, threatening glare that meant, I could kill you. When Laura was a child, her mother actually said it, with no awareness of the power of her words. Children of borderlines and survivors of hurricanes have much in common. Survival is dependent on finding a safe place, staying low, and not being fooled by the eye of the storm. When her mother found a dirty dish in Laura's bedroom or wasn't able to find her car keys, it triggered the same storm. Laura knew better than to say anything or get in her way. Her mother calmed down to catch her breath and would start in all over again, repeating the same sentence, such as, You make me sick, a belief that Laura had already internalized. Laura could not remember the whole speech because she had learned to shut out the sound of her mother's voice. When Laura was young, the tirades terrified her, but as she grew older, she became immune to them. Children are confused by how quickly anger is forgotten. Now is all that matters to borderlines. Laura's mother could spank and scold her one minute and hug her the next. One time she threatened to get rid of her, packed her suitcase, and later the same day told her that she couldn't live without her. Contradiction breeds confusion, and children may feel set up, manipulated, and provoked. Their frustration is often expressed in the words, I just can't stand my mother. Although borderlines fear losing what they love, their rage frequently results in destroying what others love. They tend to hurt others in ways that replicate how they themselves were hurt. Borderlines may destroy what is good and loved by their children because they are intensely jealous of the loved object. They cannot give others what they do not have. When enraged, some divorced borderlines may deprive their children of contact with their father, either to punish him or the children. The most tragic scenario is that of the Medean mother, who, like Medea in Greek mythology, defies the basic laws of nature by physically sacrificing her own children in response to abandonment by a husband or boyfriend. The Medean mother's fear of abandonment endangers her child's life. She drives me crazy. Alice had got so much into the way of expecting nothing but out-of-the-way things to happen that it seemed quite dull and stupid for life to go on in the common way. Children with borderline mothers adjust to the chaos of their lives by learning to expect the unexpected. They associate love with fear and kindness with danger. Craziness becomes normal, and life without chaos may seem boring. They may grow up without recognizing healthy love. In one well-known definition, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Although borderline mothers may love their children as much as other mothers, their deficits in cognitive functioning and emotional regulation create behaviors that undo their love. Borderline mothers have difficulty loving their children patiently and consistently. Their love does not endure misunderstandings or disagreements. They can be jealous, rude, irritable, resentful, arrogant, and unforgiving. Healthy love is based on trust and is the essence of emotional security. 
Their children therefore may grow up without knowing the meaning of healthy love. Things never get back to normal for children with borderline mothers. As Linehan explains, over time, children and caregivers shape and reinforce extreme behaviors in each other. Children of borderlines may tune out by dissociating and disconnecting from their environment. They cannot feel embarrassed, humiliated, ridiculed, or hurt if they are no longer in their own bodies. Unfortunately, the sensation of depersonalization or dissociation makes them feel crazy. Borderline mothers may subtly imply or blatantly accuse their children of being crazy with statements like, there is something wrong with your head, or you're out of your mind, or you're crazy. They project their own disorganized thinking onto their children, and eventually their children may give up the battle to maintain their sanity. Christina Crawford describes the child's descent into madness. You just ease into being crazy. It doesn't happen overnight. You get tired of the constant battle with no victories. You become exhausted, hoping for the ceasefire. You lose your grip on the world slowly and drift into the chasm of your own hopelessness. Laura suffered from depersonalization for a 12-month period during middle school. She told no one about her feelings of unreality and suffered silently, having mastered the ability to pretend that everything was fine. She was living a fairy tale, pretending to be happy in a make-believe world. She had become Alice. You know very well you're not real. I am real, said Alice, and began to cry. You won't make yourself a bit realer by crying, Tweedledee remarked. There's nothing to cry about. Children of borderlines have been down the rabbit hole. They have heard the Queen of Hearts order everyone beheaded. They have attended the mad tea party and argued with the Duchess for the right to think their own thoughts. They grow weary of feeling big one minute and small the next. <laughs>